Hello everyone, this is Brian, and welcome back to Twilight Struggle Play the Experts, the game where I play the experts and you learn all the lyrics to the Soviet National Anthem. Now, last time we started off well, we quagmired our opponent and managed to steal a bunch of points in South America before he could even get a presence. He unfortunately had a scoring card too, but then we sucked all the possible juice out of OPEC and ended the turn in a in pretty good shape at 13 points. And then I missed an awesome insta win and peaked at 18 points, almost there. But, you know, having made a few mistakes on the previous turn, we gradually, the tide, the Soviet tide receded, and now we end the turn with only, or begin the next turn with only a seven point lead. Our once nearly insurmountable 18 point lead has shrunk to a measly seven points. And here we are at the beginning of turn seven, the last turn of the mid war. But I want to take you for a moment back in time to. The beginning of turn six, the beginning of last turn, because that is where I missed a, I actually kind of missed several win opportunities. None of them were certain, but many of them were even probable. And so part of the homework for last time was what were these wins you have alleged to have missed? Now you'll remember that what I did here was I headlined the Europe card thinking, hey, Europe. Europe, I dominate it. That's always worth five points. Why not take five points, get up to 18, and then figure out what to do from there? Well, that was, that was the first and perhaps most dramatic mistake. And the reason is that I could have headlined brush war. And I could have taken the brush war in Italy. It would have even been what I call a clean brush war. There would have been no, there are no friendly countries touching Italy. And so it would have been a 66.6666666666% chance of successfully taking over Italy. And if I had taken over Italy in headline phase, and keep in mind, I see his headline card. It's Junta. It has absolutely nothing to do with scoring or Europe. And so if I'd done that, and then I had, so a two-thirds chance, I take Italy, and then European scoring is worth seven points. And seven points plus 13 points makes 20. I missed a two-thirds chance to instantly win the game, and I'm sorry. I'm really, I'm really, really sorry. And I did ask, as part of the homework, well, why did I miss that other than being a total idiot? Because there is actually sort of a structural reason why I sort of sailed on past that and missed it, which is that normally Brush War is for... I think of it as a tool for flipping dominations or, or at least stopping your opponent for dominations. And, and rarely it's a, it's a way of seizing the very last country and gaining full control and just cramming in a 10-point scoring round. But again, it's normally for flipping a dom, you know, making it instead of him dominating, me dominating. That's like the, I mean, that's a huge point swing, right? You want to do that when you can and you don't want to waste brush war on something where it's not going to have, you know, add in that domination effect. And so it's just not normally for piling one more battleground onto a country that you already dominate, but you aren't ever going to control, which is what, you know, taking Italy is, right? It's kind of a two-point swing there or a two-point addition to the scoring, but it doesn't change domination. I already had domination, so I didn't even think of hey, I should use Brush War somewhere where I have a domination to pile on another battleground. But that is perhaps what separates me for the time being, because I certainly don't ever plan to do it again. But it, it, you know, it's one of those things that separates you from that master level of play where you not only know the normal rule for using a card like Brush War, but you also recognize the exception to the rule that are 
And of course, anytime you can do something and get a two-thirds chance to just insta win the game, particularly when even if it fails and you're still in pretty decent shape, then, you know, obviously you should be doing that. Now, as it turns out, that wasn't enough for me. Missing a two-thirds chance to win wasn't enough for me. I went and glossed right over another way to win, which was kind of more in the 50% chance to win. And in fact, in most situations, it's something I could have probably done even after the brush war for you. So say I do the brush war, and it failed in Italy. So, oops, it didn't happen. And then he does his junta, and he's off huntaing things in the Americas. Say I then spaced Cultural Revolution, my la- which would be at that point my last remaining three card. That's a 50-50 chance of getting three points right there. And if I did that and he didn't instantly score something, now mind you, he might have a scorecard and, you know, for all I know and blah, blah, blah. As it turned out, I don't think he did. I think he had to go dig up a score pile with Kennedy so he wouldn't, as it turned out, if he even had time. Because if I space it successfully got the three points, then then I come back and the very next action round, I score five more points and have 21 points and win the game. So I didn't find those. And I'm sorry. And I'll try to do better. But now you know. You know how. As one reason we play these games is so that you can see the little, the exceptions as well. You know, you can see these things in context. So, Meanwhile, let us go back through the time travel machine into turn 7 and a DEFCON 3 and see what our new hand is and see if we can turn this, turn the tide back around toward the high Soviet number side of things. And so here is our hand. I will say that I am not disappointed in this hand. There are some good things. So perhaps fate's giving us a second chance. Now, we carefully hoarded Brush War, so at least I didn't squander it on something foolish, but I would have happily squandered it on instantly winning the game if I had paid attention. But we have a Brush War, so we can flip a country maybe, probably, even if we need to. We're not super happy to see Voice of America back, especially now that we can't space cards of op value 2, but... At least we control it, and we control when the timing of it is, and that will very likely be our hold card this turn, because there's nothing else that we absolutely have to hold or or whatever. But it's going to sit there, and even if we have to fire it off, it's much better when we control the timing of it, and then we can get two of the points of the four back afterwards. Now, there are, however, some really good cards. First of all, we got two four ops cards. We've got We Will Bury You and we've got Nuclear Test Ban. So even just as ops qua ops, then those are pretty awesome. The ABM Treaty is super duper awesome because it can be used for a big giant coup in a place of our choice. And so can Junta. So there's a couple of different lines of using this set of coups that we can go about. And first of all, we have another opportunity at Asia. You know, we tried to make some luck for ourselves in Asia a couple of turns ago. Didn't work out, but we managed to kind of pivot sideways into Central or South America and bring home a massive seven-point scoring. So that was, that was good enough. And Asia still hasn't scored, but now is the first turn. It could score again. It's going to score again sometime in the medium near future, most likely. So one thing we can do as a Soviet player, we could headline ABM Treaty. And that would see the, the, the DEFCON just improve to three because of the end of turn thing. So headlining ABM Treaty takes it all the way to four in headline phase, and then we could take a coup in headline phase with the DEFCON eligible for a coup in Asia. And we could go crunch into Pakistan, which, if we had any kind of a decent role, would make us now have three battlegrounds to his, well, his two, and then there's, he could grab Japan at his at his leisure, but he wouldn't get to dominate that. 
Now he does have the China card, which means that unless we got, unless we breached the, unless we got all the way up to three, which I think requires rolling like a six or a five, something like that. So he gets to take six off of a roll. So no, yeah, I mean, we could, uh, well, if we roll a four, then we'd have eight. Yeah, so we'd have to roll a five or a six to take Pakistan so securely that we could then turn our turn our faces westward and play a junta and take another coup in round one and you know then leave him with no coups and we just got two coups in two different awesome places. But because the coup the coup in Pakistan would be in headline phase, if we didn't quite do it enough, then we could use our action round one to fill up Pakistan the rest of the way to three, and then he wouldn't be able to use China card to take it over. And then he would get a coup somewhere that he wanted, probably in somewhere in Central or South America, based on, you know, what looks easy to coup. Uh, I don't think he would go to Iran, probably. But you never know what scoring cards he has. Anyway, so we could give him a coup and, and, you know, allow him a coup. And then we'd still have Junta to do the little place two in and then realign kind of trick that might still make us some progress over on that side. So that is one of the possible awesome courses of action that we have available. And it is a quite viable one. And it could swing Asia from scoring six or seven for him to scoring one point for him, <laughs> which I think would be, a, you know, that's a pretty big swing. So that, however, leaves another line of play available, and that is to headline Junta. And by headlining Junta, we could, for example, fill in, you put the two points in Argentina to kind of just lock that back down, and then we'd still get a coup in, say, Venezuela or Brazil, probably Venezuela because of OPEC, and if we did well enough, then we'd be in. If we did even a little bit well, then he'd have to kind of fight us for it. And however we did, we'd still have ABM Treaty to take a second coup in South America for a big grunty attack. So best case, if we just roll six after six, we could end up with control of South America. And that converts a score of currently nothing, or actually currently minus one, to a score of plus eight or plus ten. And so that's kind of, you could look at it as going to Asia right now is sort of a defensive, you know, we're, we're attacking Asia, but it's a sort of a defensive scoring maneuver because we're trying to make him not score those points. Going to South America is an offensive scoring maneuver because we're trying to increase our score. And I'm, my by personality, I'm a little bit of an attacking player player. Maybe you figured that out by now. I, you know, I look for ways to score things. And I look for opportunities to maybe score something before he does. And it's like, well, you know, Asia will score someday. But if we get the Asian card, we might have to worry about that then. <laughs> We have some other ways we can, you know, we have we actually have another way to put a plug in Asia, and the plug might not hold, but we could put it in. But we've got these two four ops cards, and if you know, if we keep him distracted long enough and he doesn't go grab Japan, then we could jam four points into Japan, and then it's just a matter of does the scoring card come up before or after the US Japan relationship. But it's actually better than even that, and you know it's better than 50-50 because it, even if J U.S. Japan card comes up first, but we get it, then we can space it, and then Asia comes up and maybe scores nothing. So, in terms of just the relationship, I mean, there's, he can of course attack in Asia too. Let's keep in mind, but you Surrey River skirmish did already come out, or yeah, it didn't come out of the deck completely, but it it shuffled back in there somewhere. But it, it's not like he's definitely holding it or anything. So. I have a good, basically, I, I've got a little back pocket thing on Asia available. It's chancy, but it's there. And, you know, honestly, if it's sort of a 70% chance of keeping Asia from scoring, then that's a pretty good chance. And meanwhile, so meanwhile, why not, so why not take that 
and go use these other cards to try to put some hurt in South America and maybe run our score back up to a big, nice high number. So that is my plan. We are going to headline Junta. Now he's going to eventually get his say with that OAS. Uh, so that's why it's good to have Argentina locked down a little better. And, well, pretty good. We rolled a five. So we get in by one, and that's going to take him some effort to... Okay. So look what he's done with OAS. It's an interesting interesting way of doing things. You know, I thought he was going to maybe put at least a point into Venezuela so that I would have to compete with him more. But what he's doing, he's gone to Colombia... So that if I fill up Venezuela, he could realign me at plus one. See, because he's got Brazil and Colombia, and I would only have Venezuela. And I wouldn't have any adjacent influence. So if he knocks me out, I wouldn't be able to get back in. So that's a pretty smart little problem he's created for us. But it's a problem that turns out to be solvable by brute force. <laughs> a big, a big hairy ops card. We're going in, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to put one point here in Venezuela, taking control, and we're going to put, we're going to spin three points to put two points there, taking control um, in that sort of pay the yarn prize, nasty little way that one can do of Colombia. So now, yeah, he could coup Colombia back, and then we could coup Colombia, you know, so if he wants to start a, a coup back and forth war, all the while of which we have domination of South America. He can, and if I get a free second, I can take an ABM coup in Brazil, and then we'll totally control South America. So that is my, my hopes and dreams uh, for South America are, are strong. And then, preferably, right after I control it, we can get the scoring card and play it <laughs> before you know anything else can happen. So he is doing a coup. Okay, so he has returned to his favorite ground, his stomping ground in Africa, and he he got his little military ops, which that's right, I, I always forget that Junta, because it's a free coup, quote unquote, in South America, doesn't give you military ops. And they go, why don't I have two military ops? But yes, Junta does not give you military ops when you use it, when you play, do the event coup thing. But he took a coup in Africa so he got his ops in, and he's trying to knock me down so he can dominate again. Because see, he's got he's got four battlegrounds. So if he could just if he could just have enough countries that he has more than me, then then that would be worth what uh, that like six points to him if he gets a full four to one domination of that. So fortunately, he didn't actually get domination yet. So I have got the aforementioned free moment. And I am going to go for broke in South America and try to turn it into a giant eight-point grunting control. We're taking a coup in South America. Wah, wah, wah. Kaboom. Oh, we rolled a six. We rolled a six and we didn't just take it. We took it hard. We took it where he's probably not ever getting back into Brazil. And we control. Control, I tell you. Like with a capital C, control South America. So that is a happy, good moment. Okay, and there goes one of our happy little liberation cards to space. That would have let us put a bunch of guys in Central America. So he's taking a space shot, licking his wounds, which I have to admit that my dice rolls have been pretty good this turn. It's as if I've been forgiven for all the mistakes I made last turn. So we have a space shot coming too. Shuttle Diplomacy is our only bad card. And again, you know, that was, I, I didn't, maybe I didn't mention that, is that's why I missed the space shot because I it made me have to space a good card. You know, Culture Revolution, kind of a good card. Like I wouldn't normally space that. Because if it, nothing else, it's free ops, or I could grab the China card with it, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't do it, so now I'm going to do this. Now, this is a card I definitely don't want him to get put in effect in the current situation, because it, it helps him a lot in Asia, and it even you know probably helps him in, in the Middle East. 
So we have sent it away, not to return, and we got our three points that we should have gotten last turn at a better time, but we didn't get them, but now we've got them. So we have succeeded in another die roll. Let's just see how many die rolls we can succeed in this turn, because, you know, I'd rather be lucky than good. So he's taken a coup. All right, so now he's gotten... He's now he's gotten, see, do, Arab, they're all dominating. So here's Arab-Israeli war. <laughs> Didn't we just play that last turn? And we can take a coup back at him, I guess. And roll another six, because, hey, why not? That's, that's the best plan. All right, so he, whoa, whoa, he decided he's trapped with the Africa. This, this turn is not going well for the Americans. <laughs> He's trapped with the... I mean, he's got several more plays, but I guess he feels like... So he must have some terrible, terrible, terrible choices to make in his hand. And so he is going ahead and cashing not for domination. So he only hit, instead of six points, three points from Africa. So in the end, our spam the little tiny countries in Africa full of little ones has finally paid some fruit. Now, it could have paid some fruit earlier, maybe, uh, if I had been a little more on the ball last turn, but it paid fruit this time by the skin of a good coup roll or two. And so now, with Africa under control, I am going to turn to the risky play I mentioned, and I am going to jam four grunty points into Japan. Now, notice what that does at the moment. That turns Japan from a, I think a second ago, it might have been a seven-point scoring for, let's see, it was three to two battleground. So it was one battleground. Uh, no, it was a, it was a yeah, it was a six-point scoring because of Afghanistan. But now we've turned it into a zero-point scoring. We've even nullified Afghanistan because... Japan touches his homeland is is how it it's got one of those little risk arrows over to North America so that that actually you know now we've both got a toucher and if the US Japan card comes up if it, it so for us to fail here it has to come up before Asian scoring and he has to be the one that gets US Japan card any other combination, so that's about three quarters of the combinations, we've just turned Asia into a zero. So I feel like that's worth it to risk four ops on, especially because, remember, for him to turn it back, you know, yes, I'm investing four ops in a risky thing, but for him to turn it back, he has to spend four ops too. He has to spend that U.S. Japan card. So ops is actually, even in the failure case, ops is neutral. In the success case, score is highly positive for us. So we are, see, we've lot we've got South America in our in our bank. That's one of the things to score. Central America is just sitting there neutral with nothing, and he's probably afraid to go into Cuba because of the Daniel Ortega card could come up. We just scored Africa. It's not going to score again until final scoring. We dominate the Middle East, we dominate Europe. And so we're trying to put a plug into the very last way he could get a lot of points. And that is my thinking there. Please do argue with me in comments why you think I might have maybe should have done something else. But that's my thinking. I've thought about that now, Japan grab thing a lot. And I came down on, you know, you have to think of these things statistically. You know, what's the chance? It's not, you don't think about how horrible it's going to feel if he gets that Japan card and goes to nine in Japan. You think about well, what's the chances that's going to happen, and how many you know what what how many victory points does this gain or save me on the average, and that's that's how I'm thinking, and I it, it's telling me to go to Japan with four points. So let's see what he does. Maybe he's going to play the U.S. Japan card right now. No, he's going to play the Usuri River Skirmish, the very card that I had checked to make sure it had shuffled back in as opposed to him definitely having it, you know, because you can kind of know what your opponent ha definitely has on turn seven. And, he, and though he just, he got it on the reach around there. And so that wasn't what I really expected was an attack, not in Japan, but in other country, the other two countries we control. So our, uh, our opponent still has some life in him. And so... We don't have anything big enough. 
we're going to have to go fix one of these problems. And he'll probably take over North Korea, unfortunately. Let's see what he does. Yes, he's taken... Wait, he hasn't quite... Oh, that's right. He doesn't have enough to quite take it. All right. So, unfortunately, after carefully hoarding <laughs> Brush War all this time, I feel like I actually probably need to just cram it into North Korea to keep up with him. You know, I, I would rather have used it in some efficient way, like in, say, Mexico, <laughs> to, you know, try to create a domination for us, or to wipe him completely out of the Middle East, perhaps, or even go ahead and do that Italy thing might even be better than the Middle East. But here it is, three points going into North Korea. Sorry. Uh, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes I think I think this is where, you know, honestly, I think the most efficient use of that card in this context is to keep him, you know, even if he's going to score Asia, I want to suck all his juice out of defending that and none of it out of attacking the places where we dominate or that he does not quite currently dominate. So let's see what he does. Okay, we have lost a piece of footage here. It would have been a very sweet piece of footage if we had it. I'm not sure how I lost it. I must not have had the recorder running so what it turned out, remember where he had to remember where he had to play the Africa card early, and so we were thinking he had to make some terrible choices. Well, as it turns out, he also had the South America scoring card. So as it turns out, our attack was placed where he where it hurt him the most in South America. And he had to play that, and he turned our 7-point lead into a 15-point lead. We got our 8 points, and we cashed them. They went to the bank, and hey, if it lasts till if it lasts till turn, till the end of turn 10, then we could get another big score out of South America. So he'll have to, he'll have to be fighting back there. So that was good, but now we go to the beginning of turn 8. Eight, and he's showing us a very depressing headline. He is headlining U.S. Japan. So the whole little discussion we had about, well, is it really only about a 25% chance that that'll happen and, and totally screw us? Well, it's happening and we're totally screwed. So, uh, so uh, I'm just going to... I'm just going to console myself that I was playing with the odds. And we will note, I will certainly note that I had plenty of good luck last turn. So you can't have them all go your way. And this is the one that's not going our way. And that's fine. And now let's take a look at a beautiful thing that happened in our hand. Because his little Japan card is actually basically moot. If you look carefully at my hand. Because there is Asia scoring. And it's actually awesome to see Asia scoring. Not because you know, we can't, you know, it's not like we could headline it and get it in before the U.S.-Japan card because the U.S.-Japan card comes first anyway. And plus, we don't even control North Korea yet. But the thing that is awesome and beautiful is that we have the Asian scoring card and we have the five-year plan card. And we're going to get to do the thing. We're going to get to do the k k k k combo because we are going to play out every single one of our other cards, including the highly annoying and painful, I might add, Voice of America. We're going to let them have that. Got to let them have it. And then we're going to come to action round seven, and we're going to only have two cards in our hand, and they are going to be five-year plan and Asian scoring, and we are not going to play Asian scoring. We're going to play five-year plan, and it's going to say, Def Con warning, you're holding a scorecard. But then when five-year plan activates... Asia scoring goes to the discard pile safely and does not score. Now, we've still got a final scoring problem, but we've just eliminated a massive, massive, you know, probably at this point, eight or nine point liability for this turn and kept the score at 15, or not kept yet, but we're going to have kept. And so we're just going to start playing some stuff down. And I don't have a lot of great headlines here. I don't need to, I mean, Pershing 2 would at least, you know, it would randomly pull some his guys out of 
Western Europe, which I don't really need to do. It'd give me a victory point, which, you know, every victory point helps when you're at 15, but I kind of want to keep a few high ops cards here. You know, I, I feel like this turn is mostly about quote unquote scoring nine points or unscoring negative nine points uh, or whatever it is when we don't score Asia. So I'm going to keep my focus on that, keep the rest of it high and make sure I can respond to any other attacks that he can manage here. Uh, hopefully keep him, maybe I can keep him distracted in Asia, you know, as if it's going to happen. So let's see. Uh, we'll go ahead and get our coup in. I went ahead and headlined the, he gives us a point whenever he takes a coup, just to calm him down in places like Africa. So we're going to take us a coup, gain us some, Gain us a Mexico, so now we're making a threat in making a threat in Central America. We'd have to get some non-battlegrounds, but it, but hey, you know we got a we got a toucher. That's a toucher. Mexico touches, so he's going to realign. All right, so he's going to just try to realign us back out because you know we can touch him, but he he can also touch back. So he's touching back, so he gets to realign it even. He has successfully done so. Good for him. He spends his extra little thing in Panama because probably couldn't find anywhere better else. Doesn't work. We get a few meaningless points at this point in Europe. We're not going to need those. Uh, but hey, we'll keep them all. Overprotection is good. And hey, what a better time to go ahead and get rid of this irritating solidarity event. Since the Pope was in play, that made it so that he got three free guys in two, yeah, in, in Poland. But hey, he gave us Comic-Con, so that was just the point we needed to make that a non-event. Otherwise, I was going to have to stack a point in Poland first, which does kind of telegraph what was going to happen, and then play Solidarity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So he's got Star Wars, which in, in a war where he was ahead in the space race would be... Uh, unbelievably powerful event for him because he could then go get any event he wanted out of the discard pile and instantly put it into effect. And he can even do that thing. Like if I had war games and he was ahead in points, and I had thought I had safely discarded war games by just using for ops. He could actually bring it out of the discard pile and instantly win. That's a, that's a American cuckoo combo is star warsing for star warsing for war games. Shall we play a game? But in any event, since he's not ahead in the space race, it's just two ops. So he's going to go reestablish himself in Mexico. So all of our coup is for naught. He undid it. So we're going to use Cambridge 5 and go ahead and uh, make sure he doesn't get a toucher in North Korea. I've got enough touchers, so that'll save points for scoring. Oh, he has a Muslim revolution he doesn't want to take place, so he is spacing it. That's fine. We'll go ahead and use Pershing for influence. And I'm going to do a little bit of overprotection here because of Voice of America. So I want him not to be able to break control of two countries in Central America. I want to make sure that even after he takes four things off, that I will still have control of South America. So one small step, I mean, he could have used it to try to catch up some in the space race, but it's so he's so far behind that there's no point in it. He might have played it for the one point if he had succeeded in his other space race. But yeah, I agree with just playing it for ops. So he's working on, he's going to try to get a domination of Central America going, perhaps before Central America scores. Eventually he's going to come roaring back in Africa, but he's not going to do that until toward the end because it's not going to score again until the end. He still doesn't know about the sucker punch we're about to deliver him. He's probably wondering right about now, oh my gosh, what terrible card does he have in his hand that he's giving me Voice of America? So he is... All right, yeah, so he is going for the Middle East, which might be a sign that the Middle East is... Uh, maybe he even has the card or is going to have to score in a minute. Uh, so we overprotected South America enough that he does not have uh, a way to do us harm there. So he see he's going to knock us out of two battlegrounds here. We're only going to be able to get back into one, which of course I want it to be Iran, the one that it's much harder for him, or you know, it's much harder for him to get to Saudi Arabia and take it over. So I want to take the, the easy tour over. 
All right, he's playing Portuguese crumbles for influence, which is basically a freebie for us. So he's contesting us in Saudi Arabia, and it's a meaningless effect for him in Africa. So that was a good time for that. We're going to go ahead and pound in NATO, which I had say, that's why I did Voice of America first, so I could be able to respond to some of his harm with a really big card. He's going to get NATO, but we're past the point of trying to realign him in Europe or anything like that. Hopefully he doesn't just pop out special relationship. Oh, he doesn't even have control of the UK. So yeah, it's, that's a pretty meaningless card. So he's taken a coup probably in Africa. Yes, reestablishing his domination. And now we let the other shoe drop. We are going to sh make him really sad and crush his will. Because we're just going to overprotect some more stuff, just kind of try to lock in our lock in our lead, maybe take his domination away again. But you know, really, I'm I'm just getting ready for turn ten because he's going to get the last move in turn ten, and so when I've got free ops, I'm starting to think in the late war. I'm starting to think as the Soviets about overprotecting my battleground so that he can't just pay the iron price with one point and take away my dominations. Now, we just played Voice of America, so he's not going to have that, which, you know, thank our lucky stars. And, yeah, we'll just contest his domination and say, sorry, guy, yep, our, our run of, you know, good luck and sometimes being able to see the combos in the cards has continued. And so... He gets one more sad. Okay, so he's going to hit us hard with Eastern European, hoping to, you know, shift the balance in Europe. Because, uh, see, in late war, that does two points per country for three countries. And we go to turn the top of turn nine. Now, the top of turn nine would normally be when I gave you homework and said, tell me what to headline, because next time we're gonna, there's going to be a quiz, a pop quiz. But as it turns out, I think it would, if I waited till next episode, it would be a really short episode, because look at what we've got in our cards. And see, we see his headline. He's headlining Red Scare Purge, so we know he's not doing defectors. We know he's not scoring any points. We've got 16 points. And, you know, of course, the first thing that hits your eye there is war games. But hopefully the second thing that hits your eye is OPEC. We don't even need to go through the gobbledygook, get all risky, and maybe he has a scoring card or something terrible, pulls it back from the brink. I don't know if he could. or But no, we can just headline OPEC, and the game is going to end in headline phase because OPEC is still worth four points to us. Let's do that. Headline OPEC. And there it is, folks. We have somehow beaten a 2015 rated player, whom I have never beaten before and had played, what, six times before? So now I'm six and one against him, or one and six against him. <laughs> And that just makes me feel pretty excellent. Uh, I will be the first to admit that there was plenty of good luck on the way, along the way, especially that last turn, getting all those coups to come in. And I will certainly admit that I made some mistakes that I deserved to be punished for. But that punishment will have to wait for a later day. So, folks... This has been another awesome game of Twilight Struggle, Play the Experts. And for some reason, and you know, I'm not cherry picking these games. This is the first two games I've played against these two guys in months and just happened to be the ones that came out well. But right now, it's, it's Expert Zero, uh... Twilight Play the Experts host. One, two. Now I have located for the next game, I have located an even higher rated opponent, even more likely to crush me like a bug, as I'm sure everyone really ought to be rooting for these experts at this point. And I believe he's rated something like 
2072 or 2080s. I mean, they go up and down when you look, but anyway, he's getting up there toward, you know, the highest end of this rating chart that exists. And we're going to be playing that. Now, there will probably be a one week hiatus, a traditional one week hiatus, uh, I believe, in between this show and the next show. Next show will indeed be standard rules again, and we'll see how they do. I, I am actually moving to a brand new house also, so, you know, it, it, if it's a, forgive me if it ends up being a two-week hiatus. I'm trying to make a one-week hiatus. Might be a two-week hiatus, but meanwhile, enjoy the, enjoy the 1945 lyrics of the Soviet National Anthem as I ring it out and let you look at all the cards that got played ever in the game, etc., etc., so thank you very much. This has been Brian, and it has been Twilight Struggle. Play the experts. Yeah.